from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Our personal photos, papers, music, and videos are important to us. They record the details of our lives and help define us. But increasingly, our possessions and our communications are digital. So we can go back and look at these pictures that we've taken without actually having to print them out. I can email them to friends or, or relatives. Uh, or we can put them on CD and then bring them somewhere and show them. Yeah, so. My sister lives in, in the U.S., in D.C., so we email each other like every day. <laughs> we used to take pictures with the, with the telephone, the cell, the cell phone, and email each other. Yeah, I mean, you could probably track my life pretty well if you look through all the emails I've ever sent. What, I've probably got 2,500 on there that I haven't deleted, just in case. Um, It'd probably be neat if I could look at it 30 years from now, what I'd done. Digital files are encoded to represent text, images, audio, video, and more. They are fragile and completely dependent on software and machines to make them accessible. Kids at camp are now um, no longer writing letters home to their families. Instead, they're sending emails, they're sending pictures and you know, v, v blogs and all sorts of new forms of communication. Well, uh, you know, I, my, my parents saved my camp letters. Um, you know, how are we going to save our kids' camp letters uh, or the digital equivalents? What are we going to, how are we going to do that? The, the sort of notion of passing on a shoebox of photographs for three generations is going to be very different in the digital world. We can preserve our digital possessions and keep them accessible for years to come, but we have to archive them and actively manage them. No matter what type of file you want to save, they all require the same essential preservation strategy. One, identify what you want to save. Two, decide what is most important to you. Three, organize the content. Four, save copies in different places. The first step is to identify what you want to save. Where are the files located? On your computer? On your camera? Online? Are they scattered around on unmarked CDs? Identify everything that you want to collect. Okay, well, it'll probably take me 10 minutes to find a particular thing, but um, you know, it won't take me half an hour, two days. But it, that's almost by memory than any sort of library system, let's say. It may not be practical to save every single file, and some may be useless to you by now. So the next step is to decide or select exactly what you want to save. This step will help you reduce the number of files that you have accumulated and help reduce the storage size of your digital archive. First of all, define what you have. Why do you want to keep it? If there are 14 slides of one mountain, 13 of those can, can go. Once you've decided what to keep, you need to gather everything into one place. Organize it all in one container. Create a main archive folder and title it something like My Archive. Then, if you want to organize your files further, create other folders inside the master folder and name them with simple descriptive titles such as video, audio, photos, or documents. It may help to include the date and subject in the folder titles. And try to keep your title scheme consistent. Next, transfer your files from wherever they are, your camera, cell phone, drives, CDs, and so on, into the archive folders you've just created. If you have several copies or versions of a file, always save the highest quality master version. You can always make additional copies from the master version. You can even give each file a descriptive name to help you find the files again in the future. Once you've transferred all of your files to the main archive folder, it's time to make backup copies. You can copy the main archive folder to a CD or flash drive, but those media may be obsolete and useless in a few years. 
an external hard drive is still your best and most convenient choice. An external hard drive can hold a lot of content, maybe all of the digital files that you have, so it makes a good central repository. And it's portable. Make a copy of the hard drive and store that copy in a different geographic location. This is simply good insurance. If something happens to the content in one place, it's safe in another. Drives can decay or become outdated in time. So at least once every five years, transfer the content from the old drive to a newer storage technology. This helps ensure ongoing access to your archives. And always make a backup copy of your archives in case the unexpected happens. I had a computer crash when I was in college and it was right before a big term paper was due. Well, when I had a computer that just, the hard drive went and it was all gone. You know, there's been times where you push the wrong button and things just disappear. In addition, you can also back up your personal digital collections with online services. But don't use an online service as your only backup. Diversify. Keep a copy on a drive at another location. I do the 3 two, one thing. I make three copies. I keep two, uh, one on an external hard drive, one on a DVD, and then um, one off-site. Print is still a good backup option. Print out copies of important documents and photographs so that you can have the document in an alternative and durable format, paper. So to recap, there is no easy way to ensure that your digital files will last. But it is possible to reduce the risk if you identify what you want to save, decide what is most important to you, organize the content, save copies in different places, and manage your archive. Following these guidelines will help protect your personal digital files for years to come. To learn more about personal archiving, please visit digitalpreservation.gov slash you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.